How's it going everyone? Zonobar here coming at you with another video. Today I'm going to do a concept that I used to do back in the days and I actually really missed. And this is answering very quick question that I see on Reddit, on forums, and answering it to you. If you guys want to be featured in the next episode, please feel free to post comments on this video's comment section or just tweet at me at Zonobra a question and I will post it on the next video. Thank you guys so much for being here. Let's get into the video. So the first question is coming from someone called Literally Blue on a subreddit and he's asking what's a simple yet effective way to counter the Yi and Kel cheese. So if you don't know what the Yi and Kel cheese is basically you have a Yi jungle and a Kel on solo lane and the whole point of it is being to protect the Yi so that after he can snowball and kill everyone and I'm going to tell you a little bit of how I think you should you can counter that. Of course there's many ways to counter that. There's no like a specific broken aspect to it that makes it impossible to counter. Everything has a counter. But I'm going to tell you a little bit of how people usually react against the Yi. So first of all, you guys in the composition of team, you guys should have some tanky figures, but also some burst figures. You should at least have one exhaust on your summoner spell, the team, whether it's on the mid laner, the support. So you want to have that. You want to at least have one exhaust, some burst, and some tankiness. The thing you have to know is that people tend to freak out too often. And you gotta know that there's two people in this cheese. There's a Kale and there's a Yi. The whole thing is centered over Yi ultimating and Kale ultimating as well for invincibility. And the important here is when to switch focus. Do you wanna focus Yi so that he can hit you and get invisible? Or do you wanna hit Kale so that she can, she has to use the realty on herself and then switch to Yi? And etc. Like those are just things that you're gonna have to figure out what in team fight, but it's super important. It's like when you're laning against a Janna, you don't want to focus one target right away because Janna is just gonna shield it. You want to attack Janna, bait the shield, and then switch focus to the ADC so that you can more, uh, you can be more effective on the poke. So be very strategizing. If you're gonna focus Kale and he is attacking you, just exhaust him. And make sure that a tanky is like zoning him. Something is happening. And make sure you guys are staying grouped. And if it's the contrary, just make sure you focus E and you burst them down and you exhaust the Kale so she cannot do anything. Or someone controls her or zones her out because of who she the R has a range. The second thing I want you to do is when when this happens, people tend to freak out when Yi ultimates and they tend to run on different direction and what happens is that Yi just focuses the closest target, Q spells and just kills it because he has so much movement speed and so much damage and it's very easy for him. One situation here is just to stay grouped. Yi is a strong champion, don't get me wrong, but he doesn't have CC, he doesn't have a dash, he's just very fast, he attacks very fast and he does a lot of damage. If you guys divide yourself, that's literally what he wants you to do. And he's just going to kill one, another one, another one, another one. Whereas if you stay grouped and you guys use your resources, your exhaust, your items, your zonias, your this, your that, you'll be able to take him down way quicker. And usually Master Yi players are super like active and they're when they click the ultimate, they just don't think anymore and they just right click on a target and it just tunnel focus and they expect to kill everyone. Just stay grouped, kill him. If Kel comes out, try to control her or something. If Kel ulties Yi, no reason attacking, he's invincible. Switch focus or and try to control him as well. And just do that. Have a good management. Be like, okay, he's gonna be invincible for three seconds. Let's switch to Kel. Kel is dying. Boom, Yi is exhausted. He cannot do really a lot of damage right now. Let's tempo and then go back to him after. Have people CCing him. Have items like uh, uh, Thorn Mail. That really helps as well. I hope that answers your question and if you need any other details feel free to post a comment down below and I will of course answer you for further information. So the next question guys comes from Foxy Slayer HD and his question is that hey I main ADC mostly but I'm trying to transition to top and mid lane so solo lanes. What are some good solo carry champions on those lanes and what mechanics slash knowledge should I mainly practice? So I'm not sure what level are you if you're like a rank player, so that's going to be hard to say. But basically you're used to play ADC, which means you're used to play in a duo lane with some kind of support with you. You're like, you are working on like your symbios with your mates and you have this, 
you have you're just used to be supported and have someone to defend you and fight with you all the time. I feel like the biggest challenge here would be the transition between being a dual lane participant to a solo laner. As far as champions are concerned, you should just play what feels comfortable to you, what you like watching online, what you like to watch in LCS, as long as it fits the meta. So right now, I would definitely recommend you to play Zed, Fizz, um, let's say like AP mages as well, like Aerie, Syndra, Victor. Those are the five that you need to get into your panel because they're really like versatile, they're always kind in the meta, and they're always really nice as far as right now like goes, like with the patches and how items work right now. Those are very, those are five very good champion. If you want to start with one AP and one AD, as an AD, I would recommend definitely Zed. I think he's a good overall champion, pretty straightforward, easy to farm in lane, and you have an escape in case you do mistakes. As far as AP is concerned, I love, I would recommend Airy, but it's a very, it's a hard champion that is really dependent on the charm. Maybe you can play something like Orianna, which can be some sort of like a off support mage in a team fight, so that could be a good transition champion. And then you can explore more like Syndra, Victor, and st stuff like that. As far as mechanics like knowledge are coming from, of course, you have to get to know Masteries, Runes, and itemization, those are really important. And as far as mechanics, you have to understand that you don't have a support with you and you have to get used to it. You're mostly never going to have heal. You're very dependent on yourself and maybe on the jungle. You have to understand that you're not going to always get blue. And one of the most important things is that you can get gank from so, so many angles. And that's something to really acknowledge is that there's so much exposure when you're a midliner from the top side of the river to the bottom side of the river. There's so many angles all across you that you have to be aware of what could happen. So your map awareness needs to be top notch. When you're in ADC, you tend to let your support deal with the vision. If he pings, you react to it, but you're not really paying attention to the mini map as often. Mid laner, you go, you watch the mini map as much as you will watch your rear view mirror on your car if you drive. That's really, really important. And also, make sure you buy wards. ADC do not buy wards, it's not a myth. Mid laners need to buy wards, otherwise they will die and you will not have fun, trust me. So the last question of today's episode comes from Mesolite. And the question is, how do you win a game if you're behind? How do you catch people out? The very simple answer to this question is vision control. Guys, I cannot stress this enough. Vision control when you're behind is literally the most important thing ever. Like, ever, ever, ever. When people are behind, they're usually just stuck in their like lane. They just wait for minion waves to come. They don't worry the jungle. They don't know anything about what's happening in the map. They don't know any movement. The reason why you want extreme well, extremely well done vision control when you're behind is that you want to be able to catch people off guard. If you know where people are, if you know the movements, if you know who's going bot, but who is not top, who is mid, who is coming here, who is getting blue, you're going to be able to study what your enemy jungle is doing, and you're going to be able to catch people off guard. And that will bring you step by step to getting back into the game. Let's say that you have a good vision in your, in your jungles. Like you have jungle on blue, on like wolves, on krugs, on red. And you have an idea of who is where, right? And suddenly you see like this Zed or like this Yazoo going only him, but he doesn't have TP. For some reason you don't, you know he doesn't have flash. Well, you want to go for him. You want to go for him before he sets up in lane and that the other four members sets in another lane. And here you just stuck because there's pressure coming from two sides and you're just like, oh shit, we're fucked. We just have to defend somehow. Catch people off guard by having a perfect vision control over your jungle and go step by step. Stay grouped. Don't necessarily like divide into, like don't leave someone alone. Have like groups of two, groups of three. But that's pretty much it. Have perfect vision control. Get step by step progress. Try to get your buzz back. Try to get one pick. Try to get two pick. Try to contest a Drake. Try to do this, this and that. And hopefully they will do mistakes. Hopefully they will get caught off guard. Hopefully they will get greedy on a blue buff. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that. You're not in an elo where people don't do any mistake. It happens all the time, every single game. 
And if you don't do mistakes and you just catch every single mistake they do because of vision, you'll be able to climb the game back and just win, get some gold back, and just uh, make small wins. Like, win small, small battles so that you can win the game slash war, and you should be able to get back into the game. So just make sure you're not alone. Like, groups of two and three are fine. And also, everyone needs to buy wards. I don't care if you're about to finish Infinity Age. I don't care if you're about to finish Rabadon. If your team needs warding, you need warding. Like, you need to ward constantly. You need to have vision, 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 vision. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope those three questions help you. If you want me to do this again, I really enjoyed doing this. So please, please, please feel free to give me some feedbacks. If there's anything you didn't like about this video, make sure to let me know so that I can make sure I don't do it for the next one. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great, great day. I'll see you for the next one. Peace.